Hi everybody, it's me again, Charles Norman from Sports Solutions LLC. We are the creators of AthleticSOS.com and I have a code down below that will allow you to use this software for free and also some instructions are down there for how to get set up with the code. Um, basically, Athletic SOS just allows you to be able to find schools that have your sport at the level you can participate and uh, match up with you academically so that you know you can attend those schools, that you qualify to attend those schools. So, in this one we're going to talk about Mark Emmert, uh, the, the future of the NCAA and um, how it affects high school athletes. And I think this is a big deal. So for those of you who don't know who Mark Emmert is, he is the head of the NCAA. He's been there for the last 10, 15 years, I guess. And safely to say, I don't know what kind of uh, gentleman he is, but he's taken a lot of L's uh, as far as it comes to uh, college sports. Everything's just sort of fallen apart. Uh, since uh, he's been there. And this could just be an evolution of time more than him himself, but he, like all established people, they got a little bit heavy handed with their power and they overplayed it. And they, what they tried to do was stifle innovation and movement forward. And I'm telling you guys right now, you cannot do that. When things are coming down the road, you can try to hold it, the train back, but it's coming through no matter what you do. And they never realized that. And so they're replacing him. I think a little bit, they're using him for the scapegoat because it's not just him. It's the people around him that uh, are giving him advice or, or putting money in. It's just, it got to be too much of a financial uh, thing for the NCAA than it was about the kids, the colleges and all that sort of thing. So. Basically, he's stepping down. I think June 30th will be his, his last day, but he's effectively um, out of the picture right now. So they're trying to figure out what they're going to do next. They haven't found a replacement for him necessarily, but we don't want to concentrate too much on that. We want to talk about what the future is going to be. So just a little, let's back up a little bit. What is the NCAA? Just like the NAIA, the NCAA and the NAIA are basically uh, sort of governing bodies for uh, the rules of, uh, for collegiate sports. Right. So what makes you qualify and what ended up happening back in the early 1900s, uh, you know, the schools wanted to play against each other and they kind of cheated a little bit. Right. They would bring these semi pro or pro athletes in there to act like they were uh, students, maybe have them take a class or two. And then they were able to participate. And of course, it gives you an advantage. Right. These kids are more advanced. And of course, your program would win. And so everybody said, OK, we can't do this amongst us. We can't trust each other as schools. So what we're going to do is going to bring in this third party. And this third party became the NAIA and the NCAA. They, they both came in. And in fact, the NAIA was the, the lead originally, and then the NCAA took over uh, somewhere in the 40s, 50s. I, I'm not going to give you a complete rundown history of this, but that's kind of it. So they're governing bodies, but they really don't have that much power. They only have the power that the colleges allow them to use. And this is where things got out of hand lately. And so, what was the turning point for them? Because basically their job was to make sure everyone that came in was an amateur. If you're going to go and play college sports, you were an amateur. You had never had any professional uh, uh, payment for playing your sport, right, for, or your activity. So you, you had not been paid for it. And that was really their bottom line. And then they got crazy with it. As the years went by, people started complaining that the kids were just going to the college to play sports and they weren't really going to class. And, and so they started to make these rules on your academic performance in high school to qualify because you know the, the, you get more powerful and more powerful and then what actually ended up happening was you know television tv rights the money started pouring in the money started pouring in and so once money starts pouring in then things get political and so the people that are at the top of these organizations um, they start getting more powerful and people start coming to them and saying, hey, if you do this or you do this, you do this, we'll take care of everything. We'll donate money. And that was the big problem for the NCAA. They, they're getting out over their skis and they want to reel it back. They tried to fight against everything. And so the real catalyst for a lot of this stuff was uh, like Ed O'Banion, right? So basically there was a, the video games were really popular. So there was a college basketball video game. I don't know if it was EA Sports or whoever it was, but Ed O'Banion's on the cover and he's prominent in the game. At the time, he was a star UCLA, out of UCLA men's basketball program. And so he questioned it. He said, how come I'm not getting paid for that? And they said, well, you were paid to go to school. So, you know, you know, go sit down somewhere and do what you're supposed to do. And it took decades for, <laughs> for him to, and he finally won that case. And so that opened up what we know now as uh, kind of the, the, the catalyst for the NIL, the name, image, and likeness situation that is, is and I, 
swear these guys fought this thing tooth and nail all the way up to the Supreme Court, which is ridiculous. You know how long it takes to get there. And they still lost. So then they try to go to Congress because they don't know what to do about it. That's the thing where you think you're powerful, but you're not really powerful because the colleges and the conferences are really powerful. And so what ended up happening was the Supreme Court ruled against them. Then some other things started happening. It's just a snowball effect. So basically, the NCAA is sitting trying to figure out what's next. The conferences are making their own rules right now. And here's the problem with the conferences. They're really a two sports in college uh, sports that make money. Men's uh, basketball and football. They make the money. The other sports, and one of the reasons they're really important is, it's how we develop our Olympic athletes, right? One of the ways that we develop our, our Olympic athletes is that they play at the collegiate level. And so it's always been really important. That's why I think Congress might need to step in, but it's also the reason I think they won't do it. It's a political firestorm. You don't want to get involved in this. So who is it going to be up to? So now the NCAA is kind of toothless. The NAIA are doing some really cool things, but that's because they're uh, number two as far as attracting the top athletes. So they're playing that second place thing very well. I will give them credit for that. They're playing it really well. They're very progressive in their thinking and how they, you know, they're taking into consideration what can they do to set themselves apart from the NCAA. Congratulations, you guys. But the conferences are getting really powerful right now, and they're going to overplay their hand. One of the things I've always said is when you get some power, you always, eventually, you let people keep going, and they overdo it. They think they've got some sort of mandate, and they don't. People want you to stay even. They want you to stay as fair as possible with your power and just regulate it, just tweak it a little bit here and there, and then they just want to know what are the rules so we can follow them, so we can move on with our lives. They don't want you going in there with your idea of how to make it better or fix it or, or do something dramatic. Just even kill here, guys. But anyway, so the conferences right now really are the powerful one. And what you're finding is football being the number one uh, money maker. A lot of the the, the schools, so the the uh, SEC and the Big Ten, Big Twelve, what you know, all these conferences, they're all ganging up. The best teams are all going over to these these power conferences because that's where the money's going to be. So where do I think the future's going? I've kind of said this before. I think football, especially. Uh, 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 the, the, the top division for football, those schools, the top schools, they're going to sort of separate themselves because that's where all the money is. And then they're going to take all the money that's coming in and they're going to trickle it down to the other sports on their campuses. That is what I think is going to happen. Or they're going to share with all the other schools to keep them from screaming and hollering and things are going to get uh, out of hand. But here's, what, here's the bottom line on all this stuff. Because you've got the NIL coming, you've got uh, Web 3.0, which is going to be the metaverse and all that kind of stuff coming. You've got the streaming rights uh, instead of television rights. That's going to be a big deal. You've got foreign uh, countries that want to, their kids want to come over here. And so the foreign uh, governments are going to start pouring money into their athletic things there. They're going to try to dra drag kids from here overseas to play. Um, and with the promise of a professional contract over there, this, this stuff is going to happen. This is me. So you you guys can hold me to this later on but what everyone is forgetting and this is the bottom line this is why we're doing athletic SOS and why we wanted you to start thinking about your own branding and what you want to do in the future is they keep forgetting the athlete is the key to all of this without the right athletes and you guys can control how this thing moves moving forward if you just say no if you just say, hey, I'm going to go do this instead of that. So all of the, that conference that's loading up all of the, the, the top football schools, if a couple of the stars get together and say, you know, we're not going to go there. We're going to go over here to this conference. And then that'll force them to have to play against you. It'll force the pro leagues to go and look at other conferences and give everybody uh, a an equal look. You don't have to just go to the power conferences and the first. You looked at the draft, the NFL draft, was just this past week, and you look, the same schools are, are in the top thing I get it those are the best players but it's because the best players are all going to one place why are you all going to one place that doesn't make any sense so what what I think is going to happen in the future is that athletes because they will have a following they will have a branding and what the schools are going to want is that following and branding to come with that kid they're going to go after that kid but that kid that athlete can go wherever they want because they're bringing their following with them but you can't go do it on your own this is key so as you're, as you're going through your career in high school and you're meeting up with other top level athletes, go start working out with some of the athletes from the other schools in your off time, in your downtime. You guys should start discussing amongst yourselves, hey, where are you thinking about going? And if you get a chance to go to the top, top program, absolutely go ahead and do it. But I would like for you guys to start going, hey, why don't we spread this thing out a little bit? If I go do this, 
you go do that. Talk with your parents. Now, don't get too uh, far out over your skis and overdo anything, too. But what do you really want to do? What kind of campus life do you really want? What area of the country do you want to uh, uh, spend the next four, four years, four, five years if you, something happened? Where, what, what do you want to be when you leave? Do you want to go pro? I get it. Everyone wants to go pro. What do you want to do after you were a pro? What do you want to do if you don't make pro? Where do you want to be? Well, how do you want to position yourself? And if you can get with some of these other top level athletes or some of these uh, varsity athletes that you're with, some of them are going to go on to school and do great things too. Stay in touch with them so you guys can all grow together. Maybe they can come back and help you. Maybe they can be an agent. Maybe they can be a uh, confidant for you. Maybe. I don't know what's going to happen as far as that's concerned, but I want you guys to be open to it. But if all of you guys have your own followings when you went in because of social media, you got these followings. When you leave school, if you guys join your followings together and start your own enterprise, I don't know what that's going to be. Am I making sense here? You guys can control the, the, the movement for yourselves. That's for high school sports. That's for college sports. But you have to think as uh, a as individuals at a unit and where you want to be to make that first and then tie the other things together and you're gonna to have to learn how to cooperate with other people because you can't do it on your own you can't say hey I'm a great player I'm gonna to go to this little small school over here and we're gonna make a splash you're gonna get killed they're gonna double triple quadruple team you whatever they need to do to take you out of being effective because your 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 teammates can't play at your level then you're gonna be in trouble there but if you can get enough people to go with you that's where you can stand out because now they can't control all of us. And it depends on the sport, I understand that. It depends on, but if you play a sport that's sort of an individual sport, if you run track, if you do uh, anything like that, you swim, whatever, your speed is your speed. Yes, the coaching might be a little bit better at those higher universities, but check out the coaching and their credentials before you go to that smaller school. It may be just fine. Or get your own private coaching too. Just go to the school that's gonna make you happy to be there and be on campus every single day. Maybe you don't want all that pressure. Maybe you don't wanna to go to this gigantic school. Maybe that's not what you wanna do. Then take your talent somewhere where you want to be. Control the narrative, people. This is where we want you guys to get used to because we want you to be able to do that as you move forward. Don't try to go buck the system. You don't have to do all of that. But we want you to learn how to control the narrative in your life so you can have a happy, fulfilling life as you move forward and that you can be discerned when you're making your your uh, uh, decisions as you move forward because you thought it through past the immediate to what's the long-term goals for you. I hope some of this is making sense to you guys. I know sometimes I get a little uh, on, on the edge of things, but that's why we created Athletic SOS. And as I said, if you look down below, there's a code. Please join us. Let your friends know that we exist. You will find every single school you qualify to attend academically that has your sport at the level you can participate. And so you will find schools you didn't even know existed and you can investigate them and see, hey, maybe I didn't even know about this school. I might be interested in this. Let me look into it. Even though you have other schools that are already coming after you and vetting you and, and trying to offer you things, now you can have some choices that you didn't even know you had. And that's what we're trying to get you guys to. Um, and so that is, that's what we're all about. Let your friends know, um, hey, by the way, like this video. YouTube is telling me we're not getting a lot of likes. We're getting people looking at it, but no one's uh, clicking the like button, and that can move us up so more people can see it. But the easier way to do that is just let your friends know. Just send this video to them so that they can think about it because I want them to use the software. It helps us out, and we, it's absolutely free to use, no cost to you guys. And then what we will do is uh, we'll keep growing. We'll keep adding more and more features to it, and we've got some great stuff coming on inside. Once you become a member inside, you'll find some great things also. All right, guys, as always, best of luck to you in all your future endeavors, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.